Blessed day, my people. So in today's video, we're going to talk about Vibes Cartel. And also, we're going to talk about the appeal court orders, the retrial audit, right? And it seems like there's a lot of cases out there that is set to do retrial and all of that. So if Vibes Cartel case for going to the retrial state, that means that maybe there might be a delay as to when that case would start. So you don't know, the judge is now requesting to see all of the, 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 the files them, I guess, were backed up and stuff like that. So, may I give you no more information on this? This article is kind of lengthy, so make sure you get your popcorn and just ready for find out what's going on. The Gaza fans them, who definitely don't want to miss this as it my people but before we're gonna further into the topics don't forget to like share and subscribe also head over to my instagram page mix up time for but i definitely appreciate that all right people so let's get to this article so you can understand what's going on is it so the article is saying court orders retrial audit the appeal court on monday instructed its registrar to request from the supreme court an audit of the matter awaiting retrial dating back six years the instruction was given as the appeal court in opening the first leg of a five-day hearing to determine whether entertainer Vibes Cartel and his three, three co accused are to be retried or acquitted for the 2011 murder of Clive Lizard Williams. Admitted that it has satellited several cases to the Supreme Court for a retrial and it's clueless as to their progress. Justice Marva McDonald Bishop made a ruling after hearing the preliminary response to defense counsel and preliminary objections of the Crown on the content of the affidavit of all accused. The accused in their affidavits expressed uncertainty about the speed with which they would be retried if the court were to make such an order. The appeal court hearing follows the Privy Council ruling in March, quashing the murder convictions of the men. The apex court had, however, ordered the case remitted to Jamaica's Court of Appeal for it to decide whether a retrial is necessary for Cartel, whose given name is Adija Palmer, and his co accused Sean, Sean Stam Campbell, Kahira Jones, and Andre St. John. Before Monday's proceedings, however, lawyers representing Cartel, Campbell, and St. John on May the 13th filed a writ of habeas corpus application in the Supreme Court in downtown Kingston seeking their release, arguing that there was no order by the Apex Court for the continued detention of their clients and as such they should be released. That application was however denied. Justice McDonald Bishop had initially mulled whether counsel on both sides should be instructed to find out the number of cases lined up in the Home Circuit Court for a retrial and advised the Apex Court as to the length of time a case such and one now being considered would take to be retried. McDonald Bishop, who heads the panel comprising Justices Paulette Williams and David Fraser, was at pains to point out that the state is being hit by a number of lawsuits on the grounds of breach of constitutional rights from matters which have not been tried in reasonable time. If the courts was to send it back, we have to set the time and place if it is to be retried, and we would have to know if the case is to be retried, how long these persons would have to wait because delay is now an issue. We know we have referred several cases back to the Supreme Court for retrial, so we must have an idea of how the Supreme Court is dealing with these retrials because if these defendants are to be retried, we have to know when a likely trial date is to be because it is relevant. The delay point is critical in this case. We throw that out there, now McDonald Bishop said. We know we have referred several cases back to the Supreme Court for retrial. The delay is critical in the case. It is critical to get an audit of the cases awaiting retrial. If we find that we send matters back 10 years and still no retrial, we see the state now being hit with several lawsuits about constitutional rights being breached. She stated, we tend to have a way to just come and say retrial on the Crown's position that all witnesses are available. We are ready to proceed and if it goes back over there and we see these matters are still in the system I think it's only fair we have to do an audit for the cases sent back for retrial by the Supreme Court going back six years. The court has to know when it's likely the trial dates are being fixed. We don't know and then you have retrial matters which they, which they say should get priority. We need to know how many cases are for retrial on the list. The status, the reason they are there 
and the disposition dates, the appeal court judge said. However, a further request by Acting Director of Public Prosecution, DPP Claudette Thompson for the registrar to also indicate in the response which of those cases were affected by issues such as COVID-19 pandemic, the availability of counsel, the availability of witnesses, and whether those cases will be prioritized and allowed to leapfrog matters was not accommodated by McDonald Bishop. I am just saying to you, and this is a concern of the court, the first thing that should guide counsel, we are to look into whether a retrial should be ordered or the men set free. The prosecution should know what it should do to satisfy the court about. The defense should know what it should satisfy the court about. The court should not be here seeking to do its own investigations. We should know the state of our own justice system. Why is there the Privy Council sent the matter back to us? The Crown is not going to send the court on any investigation. The most we are doing at this juncture is to get a list of the cases over there that we have sent back in the past six years for a retrial and where they are today. We will not be the ones to delve into the reasons for for you. That is for you, McDonald Bishop stated. In the just over three hour long sitting, the court painstakingly waded through the affidavits presented by the defense. The Crown, in its preliminary objection, argued that the different persons who have provided us with affidavits have not spoken to facts, making it so that some statements amounted to hearsay. We are mindful of the limited jurisdiction of this court as it relates to the order of the Privy Council. The single use is retrial, and so any any fact that does not go to retrial, we ask the court to say is irrelevant. Additionally, with the remit this court has as it relates to retrial, the appellants are not to be allowed to relitigate by naming new grounds of appeal that were not raised here or at the Privy Council and following the rules, pleading or argument are not properly not to be included in an affidavit and legal submissions. So we are saying those are the basis for our preliminary objections, Thompson said at the outset. During the week, Leading out process which ensued several of the points raised by the appellants in the affidavits as well as those raised by relatives of the appellants were either allowed, abandoned or partially struck. Campbell in his affidavits expressed among other things doubt about the strength of the Crown's case which he described as lacking while declaring that he was wary about the impacts of the publicity surrounding the trial and the new proceedings. A relative of Campbell in his affidavit said given the impact of social media commentaries and bloggers on the, on the perceptions of Jamaica to allow the state another bite at the apple would be a grave injustice. Whatever is left of my uncle's life that he be allowed to spend with his family, the individual said. A family member of St. John in her affidavit said media interviews given by the DPP were problematic to the fairness of any further process, adding that the publicity of the trial was devastating to the family and and her relative right to a fair trial. I have seen many social media posts from bloggers like Serpy who do not conform to any of the traditional norms of journalism, who have widespread viewership, who, ex who espouse the wildest theories which will undoubtedly influence many Jamaicans. I have met thousands of Jamaicans who do not know me. Many persons say my brother should dead a prison. That affidavit read. Furthermore, the relative said the family was broke and did not have the resources to foot the bill for a new trial. Palmer in his affidavit said he was the sole breadwinner for his family and contended that he had been subjected to a defective trial while stating that a new trial would affect his ability to continue to earn. He further complained of the emotional toll of the situation on him while stating that the conditions of detention had robbed him of his human dignity. Furthermore, Palmer said he was of the opinion that the delay in charging him and his time in custody breaches constitutional rights. He also said no one assisted him in documenting his recollection of the sequence of the event and such he doubted his memory. He further fretted that he could be branded by the prosecutor as a liar because of this. It is difficult after 12 years to instruct counsel. My defense would be embarrassed. It would not be fair to me after all this time without my witnesses. The entertainer said, adding that his constitutional, constitutional rights being breached by the prison conditions and his constituted detention while on appeal. 
His son, Adija Jaim Palmer, in his affidavit, said his father's health would not allow him to survive a new trial. I also believe that if the evidence used as the first trial is used again in a retrial, it would be very prejudicial to my father, he said, adding that his father's attorney had advised me that even if an application was made to poll pot potential jurors, it would be impossible to find unbiased jurors. The other accused, Kahira Jones, said he did not have money to pay for a new trial. In April 2014, Cartel sentenced to life in prison with eligibility for parole after serving 35 years of his sentence. His co-accused was also handed life sentences with Sean Storm and Jones being eligible for parole after serving 25 years and St. John being eligible after serving 15 years. In April 2020, following an, uh, following an appeal, the men's parole time were reduced by two and a half years each. In September that same year, the men were granted condition leave to challenge their murder conviction before the Privy Council. The matter resumes this morning at 10 when the court should begin hearing the substantive argument from the attorneys in the matter, the hearing are expected to conclude on Friday. So yeah, my people, I know that was kind of lengthy, but when you see what I go on as it relates to Vibes Cartel, how him feel, how Sean Stam family feel, them not have the money for actually foot a new trial or retrial, I should I say. You understand me, some my people? Plus, Cartel might not can remember certain things, because maybe if them are going to do a new trial or a retrial, I don't know why I keep saying new trial, um, a retrial, right? Cartel probably would have taken the stand, don't it? I'm not sure, but obviously the entertainer say might not remember certain things because remember what I about 12 years ago. So, you know, the entertainer himself might I say, yo, them go to look upon him as a liar and all these things, which 12 years, yet, yo, enough people can't even remember things that happened two years ago. So 12 years is definitely a long time, you understand? But I can watch and see how this play out, my people. As I said, I don't know if you feel like cartel them are going to be freed or I don't feel like there's going to be a retrial, is it? So that's it, you know. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bless upon yourself. Until I drop the next video, I'm out.